RC video reviews. Hey guys, I know this was kind of late on a Sunday night, but it's Memorial Day and I've spent a lot of time working on this and just wanted to get the video popped up and I figured I'll just leave it out there in case anyone wants to see it. So if you made the live stream, that's awesome. If not, I understand. No worries. Uh, like I said, late on a Sunday night. But boy, I really like this little quad, man. I had, I had a lot of fun with this. This was a neat project. And uh, I, I got to tell you, I was kind of invigorated. You know, I was invigorated working on this one because it was basically a scratch up build. Hey, Robert, how's it going? Scratch up build. You know, I, I spec the parts. I spec the, the chassis. I spec the motors. I, I made all the choices. You know, this one's all me. Um, everything about this one is a decision I, I, I decided to go with. So, I, I was excited to get it built and I pushed through pretty hard. My original intention was to do a live build, but boy, am I glad I didn't do that. I just really, <laughs> I kind of went overboard on this thing, and, but it was fun. You know, I had a lot of fun building it. So I thought I'd take you guys through the build a little bit, show you some of the things that I did, some of the learning processes that I went through and just get, let you get a good close up look at what happened here. So if you're not familiar with the first look that I did on this quad, this is a Armaton Badger DJI version, and it's, it's the six inch. And it, this one, obviously, you know, the D, DJI system. And I did go with the air unit. I used the actual uh, uh, DJI system. And I did a lot of, you get no TPU, no, no uh, 3D parts with this one. You're kind of on your own. So I had to go out and either find or make what I needed for TPU. So you're lucky Walt Disney isn't on anymore. <laughs> no, no Sunday night Disney for you, Robert. So uh, anyway, yeah, let me just move these goggles out of the way. I just kind of did that for scenery. I'll move those and kind of clear the desk a little bit, make room for the quad. That's the guest of honor. So uh, anyway, no, yeah, no uh, STL parts. You're on your own for this one. And thankfully, it's a well-loved quad. There seems to be a lot of interest in this quad out there and uh, a lot of people making parts for this one. What I wound up doing just for the record and i'll have a link to all my stl files i have one single stl on my server i haven't put it on thingiverse yet because i need to do all the attribution work and, and what i mean by that for example is that i have one single stl file but it includes the dji tpu mount i didn't uh i, I before i put it on thingiverse i got to do attribution i got to give the guy who did this credit so i have a bunch of different parts from different places and I'm going to remix them into a single download. I will put it on Thingiverse, but I have to give the guys credit that did the original work. And then on certain cases like this, I made some modifications. Now, before we go any further, I'm going to tell you this is a little bit of a hack job. Um, the real difficulty lied inside getting the opening for the wiring. So it's a little bit of a hack if you look real close at the STL, but outside it's perfect. It's structurally sound, so I don't care. <laughs> it's free. No complaints. Um, but it, and it works. It's, it's definitely solid. The only thing I had to do on the back right here with the, uh, with the, uh, openings right here is I had to use a soldering iron to open up the holes for the zip ties to hold on the immortal T, but that was it. That was it. That's all I had to do. And, uh, other than that, uh, it, it came out really well. So let me start walking you through it a little bit and, um, let's see Ram jam. How you do beautiful build. Thanks rally man. Hi, how you doing? So yeah, let me, um, I'm going to take it apart. I've already done most of that, so I'm going to take it apart and show you guys what's going on underneath, and I'll walk you through the STL parts and all the other little goodies that I did. Um, I've already done most of this, so I'm not going to be doing this for very long, just two screws. I made this little uh, TPU XT60 retainer clip for the side. Um, where I couldn't find a part that I wanted, I made it. Um, there, were a couple of, there are a couple of TPU parts on here that I wound up making. Sorry, I got to get that screw out. I don't want to lose track of that. Okay, so here's a close look at what I did inside. And I'll tell you what, this was a humbling experience because when I started out on this, you know, I kind of laid things in and I thought, well, I'll do this and I'll do that. And um, I spent some time laying the wires down to where I thought they would go. 
And I probably wind, wound up redoing it at least a couple times. And what really changed things is when I got the air unit. So as you can see, coming off the back of the e, ESC, there's no room to run the, the XT60 or main leads in the space in the back and pop them up in the, in the back on the back of the top plate, which is what I would have liked to have done. But there was just no room to do it. So I had it come out the side. And uh, the other thing that got me, you notice I've got my little Bluetooth module in there. That's the Flywoo Bluetooth. And that does work, by the way. Um, I was going to put the, the uh, TBS Crossfire right here, but it just didn't quite fit. It kept sticking out. I didn't want to jam it. I definitely didn't want to press it. So the main wires, uh, they were in the way. I couldn't get it to fit. It didn't fit between these two posts and it wouldn't fit sideways. I was really kind of annoyed about that, to be honest with you, because that's how I originally laid it out. And I was just going to run the antenna on the bottom and put park it right here in the center. But that didn't work out. I wound up running the receiver uh, back a little bit. I'll show you that in just a minute. But what did work out was because I put this TPU tray in for the air unit, I was able, and I can't take the air unit off to show you. You'll just have to kind of visualize a little bit, but you can see right in here, what I did is I cut, I used my soldering iron and I cut a channel in the TPU about as wide as that stripe right there on the air unit. And by using my soldering iron and doing that, I create a nice little channel for the wires and they lay nice and flush against the, the quad and the air unit just keeps them locked in place. So it ended up working out really well. I've got my air unit harness, my GPS harness, and my TBS uh, crossfire harness all running underneath out the back. So that's what makes it so nice and clean up top. And you notice one of the things I really focused on, if you can imagine the top plate being in here, is that there when that when the top plate is on the only place you'll see a battery uh, connection is right there on that shielded wire between the air unit and the camera that's the only place it could happen if you uh, for your battery strap so i really did focus on that actually i wanted it to be very because i've picked on other quads when they don't if the wires run a little bit loose i kind of complain about that and i'll make note of that so I, I really paid very close attention to do that and the other thing you'll notice is that the um these screws are a little bit lower uh, on the back than they are on the front, and I'll show you why in just a minute. But anyway, there's a look at the guts, and uh, it, it did turn out to be a very clean wiring uh, arrangement. So I've got my power wires running the SMO 4K. If I'm not using that, they can be tucked in there. And then the uh, camera wire for the, the DJI camera is nice and tidy, and it just runs up to the front. And that is very adjustable. That's a very adjustable little camera cage. You can adjust it both on the titanium arms right here, and you can swing the entire cage. The entire cage has some uh, articulation capabilities. So, and that, that titanium cage, man, I'm sorry. That just looks cool. That's, that's kind of, that's kind of like, uh, <laughs> I like it a lot. It's really cool. And that's one of the first things that got my attention on this quad, you know? Hey, Philip, how you doing, man? Um, so anyway, guys, yeah, that's the, that's the wiring arrangement. And I did really, this is what I mean. I, I spend a lot of time working on the wiring on this one and laying it out, but man, was it worth it. And I had a blast doing this. I mean, it was, it was humbling. I'm not going to lie. It was humbling. I, I took things apart on this. I don't know, five times. I, I can't, this is not the first TPU print on the bottom. This is not the first TPU print on the antenna holders. So yeah, I, I, <laughs> oh, and we got to talk about the front. I came up with a really cool little solution for the front. And I really want to show it to you. So a lot of the TPU prints that are out there or PLA or STL prints that are out there for this right here, they, they always seem to have these flaps that'll go from here, right here on the edge of the GoPro fingers over the screws, but the screws aren't functional. So in other words, the head of the screw just goes right through the print. And then what ended up happening was when I did that, then the print would, the wings would pop up on the side. And I thought that's just ridiculous. So I finally found a guy who got it right and he just did a sleeve. So he, he just did a sleeve and you can see that this sleeve, this carbon plate slides through that sleeve. You can see the bottom of the sleeve right there. The only problem was that it slid back and forth. So in order to get the sleeve on, unless you stretch your TPU, because it's got this little flanged shape right here, it's, got, it's flanged like that. So the problem is, he made the sleeve big enough to accommodate the flange, but then the mount slides back and forth. So I came up with this really cool solution. I was kind of like, it's so silly and stupid, but I was really proud of myself for figuring this out. Right here, right there, that little black spot right there, that's a zip tie. All it is is a flat zip tie. I slid it in there, dropped this thing down, and then when it bolted in place, 
that zip tie is held in place by this titanium. It can't go anywhere. And this thing no longer slides back and forth. It's perfectly locked in. So it was just like a, one of those simple little victories. I kept thinking, well, how am I going to resolve this in a zip tie? I, I just cut a zip tie. That was it. And stuffed it in there. And man, it's perfect. It's locked in there. And now I've got GoPro fingers so I can switch, you know, I can go from the run cam to the SMO. It, it's the correct thing to do. I mean, I think it's the right answer to have those GoPro fingers up front. And then, of course, I did the motor looms and um, let's see, on the side, on, on the back here, this particular GPS, or not GPS, I'm sorry, the, the uh, antenna and GPS and Immortal T holder in the back, they're designed to, to uh, accommodate the antenna wires. And I want to show you real quick, in case you're familiar, familiar with DJI, you know that the, these MM, MMCX connectors love to pop off. So this design is really kind of cool because they have a metal brace. That's a metal brace right there. And that thing is holding, that antenna cannot come off. That MMCX cannot come off. Um, and then up front, the air unit is held up front by posts here. So it can't slide forward. It can't slide aft. That means the antennas are going to be on there. The only thing I had to do is keep it pressed down on the TPU. And I did that with a little bit of that LLPT tape that I found from uh, project farm. So anyway, that's the top of the, that's the top of the quad. And yeah, I agree. It's, it's really clean. And then, um, I'll show you the antenna tips too. This was actually shown to me by Robert and Elias. Uh, one of the, one of the guys chimed in and he mentioned taking heat shrink and then attaching it underneath a motor mount, which is, that's fine. That worked. And then Robert and Elias, they said that they use zip ties. They put a zip tie in the arm and then they run the zip tie to the antenna and heat shrink that. So that, I like that look, it came out pretty clean, but that makes really sure that antenna is not going to get up into the prop wash no matter what. Yeah, Ram Jam says you gotta love the look of a fresh bill before it's been abused. I know I was I was looking at pictures on uh on Thingiverse, you know, and and checking out different pictures and and uh, I kept looking at them like, oh so dirty. And I, I don't want this one to get dirty. It's just so pristine right now, right? Everything's very clean. Uh no marks, no char, no nothing. It's all just really clean. So anyway, there's the top half of it. And uh, again, I've got the Azure props on here, and I will be running the gem fans. I, I've been thinking about those gem fans, and even though they're less efficient. Um, they also 16 amps less at peak, you know? So I kept, I keep thinking about that. I'm going to run those gem fans on this quad and I want to see how it does. Uh, in terms of lift, I know it's not going to be a problem. So anyway, there's the top half of the build and yeah, I'm really digging this thing. I think it really came out very clean. It's a nice clean build. And, um, if you don't know, I'm using the iFlight success F7 uh, V2 DJI board and the DJI did work. I, oh, big tip on that one. When I was configuring everything, I got MSP set up. Uh, the air unit uh, was bound to my goggles already and everything worked very well there, but I wasn't getting OSD and I did have the OSD turned on. So I kind of struggled with it. I thought, well, what did I miss? Because it's a harness. There's no soldering on this one because this is a DJI controller. It just uses a harness. Uh, there is there is no soldering. Uh, so I kind of kept thinking it must be a configuration thing that I'm missing somehow. So it turns out it was firmware. I updated the firmware to the latest Betaflight. And as soon as I did that, the OSD popped right up on the goggles with no other changes in Betaflight. So there you go. Uh, props, gem fan, yeah. And, and Robert, yeah, that's the other thing. When I was doing the motor testing, I told Robert in Discord, these F90s, man, they're sweet. They're so quiet. Man, the bearings on these F90s sound really, really good. Uh, I don't, I think, I think this quad's going to sound great. Uh, but the motor, the motors, these F90s, man, they sound, they sound really good. Real, real good. Okay. So that's the top and I'll show you the bottom now. Uh, the bottom, I originally put foam pad arms on, but then I found these, these, uh, feet. So I printed those instead because, you know, a little bit of color coordination, what the heck. And then the other thing you'll notice is there's a capacitor down here. And, um, I, I didn't, I originally had the capacitor up here, but with all the wiring and moving stuff around, I didn't want it up there. I just didn't want it up there. I wanted it down here where I could see it. Um, and then Robert made a comment to me in discord. He goes, are you worried about contact? And actually I'm really not. When I look at this from the side, man, there's a good half an inch at least of clearance from anything on the ground. And the frame is so stiff. Like you literally would have to land on a rock or something like that to pop the cap. But I took Robert's advice, uh, to heart 
and I decided to put a little protection on there. So I just added a little tiny TPU guard. That's it. Oh, sorry, that's not TPU. I'm sorry, that's PET G. Um, that's the toughest stuff I've got. So I printed that out of PET G. And then remember I mentioned earlier, the screws in the back are a little bit lower. That's why I have a nut here and then the PET G and that brings the screw down on the back, which is kind of cool because that may more makes more room for me to slide my, uh, my Velcro strap back and forth. So that actually worked to my advantage doing that, but now no real concerns at all about hitting that cap. It's pretty well protected that that's going to get hit first and PET G it's pretty thick. I forgot how thick it is. Let's say it's about three millimeters. I think that's how thick that is. So the capacitor is protected now. And if you're wondering, no, I couldn't lay it down. I, I really tried very hard to lay it down, but I was afraid I was going to bend or break the legs or rip it off the pad. So I just stopped fooling with it and I left it alone and just decided to put a guard over top. And then here's another one of those things that I was kind of really proud of it. This is a, this is a John made part and uh, I'll show you underneath here real quick, but I'll show you why I did this too. Um, uh, this is actually kind of a trick part. It's it's more than meets the eye, but I'm going to pop it off and let you get a look at it. So this is not part of the kit. I made this, and that will be in that STL kit that I was telling you about. Um, so if you decide you need an Armitan and you want to arrange your wiring the way I arranged mine, I'll give you a look at how I manage this underneath. Okay, so remember what I told you is that the wires come, the uh, air unit is right here. So the, the air unit, the wires for the crossfire come out right in front of the air unit and the crossfire lays in here nice and neat. And I have a nice little arc right there to bring the antenna out to the back. So that actually worked out really well because if I need to, I can get to the bind button with just two screws. It's right there. Uh, I like the lay of the antenna wire. The receiver is well, well away from the rest of the components. And then this is just a nice little beauty cover, but check this out. Here's the trick part. On the bottom, I printed PLA, and the reason there's black there is because I was using black PLA that didn't work, so it was stuck to the bed apparently or in the nozzle, but it doesn't matter. It didn't, it's not burnt, but that's PLA, and then after I printed about three layers in PLA to give it rigidity, then I switched over to TPU so it would be color, color matched for the rest of the quad. So that lays on there real nice and tidy. And um, that kind of hides the uh, the receiver in the back. And also there's airflow. You guys know how I am about airflow. So I made sure to make sure there was airflow and there's a little cut out there for the uh, antenna wire. So like I said, I will uh, put this, this is in the bundle that I'll make available to you guys on that single download. And um, you can use that if you want. And then um, as far as these screws go, I just want to point this out. Um, give me one second, let me just tighten that up. These two press nuts that you see, the two silver ones, that's not part of the um, the kit design. So they didn't, um, I use those because that's where I screwed my TPU mount down to the plate. So there are a couple of screws going in through here to these two press screws. And so this little, this little design is meant to go over those press nuts. Um, they did have spares, so I had spares to do it. Uh, no problem. They came with the kit. So if you get a kit and you want to follow this arrangement, you will have the extra press nuts to do that. And, um, you just use a couple of uh, screws to go in from the top and that holds the, the plate down and, and, um, gives you a little extra place for this plate to mount on the back. And again, I put some airflow, airflow grills in the back there. And then you can see the immortal T is zip tied to the, uh, the mount and zip tied to the arms. So that's about it on the bottom. Um, nice and clean and tidy under the bottom. And Robert, that's a that's a Robert touch. You know, I did that because Robert mentioned that specifically. And I thought, yeah, he's probably not wrong. It'd be my luck on my very first flight that I found a rock in the field. You know, that, that would be my luck. That's how it would go. So let me see. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, well, you know what? Before I do this, well, you know, I, what I wanted to do is get it together and wait. I'll ask questions. I'll check and see if there are questions. One set, marking this on my calendar. Hey, Robert, I listen to you, man. I know you know your stuff. Robert knows his way around. He, he does a lot of... He, Robert builds... There's not a lot of people that I know that build more than me, and Robert might be one of them. Robert might be one of the ones out there that actually builds more stuff than I do. Not, I can't... That doesn't happen very often. I'm not going to lie. I don't run into that too often. So... Anyway, let's, uh, I just want to put it back together because while I do that, I want to get it on the scale for you guys. I want to show you that and uh, let you get a look at that. So let me, while I'm doing that too, let me pop up the link. I, I did something unusual this time. I put the link in the video instead of the description. And my theory behind that was that 
Um, there are a lot of people out there who watch, you know, they'll go look at the description, they'll watch one minute of the video, they'll grab the STL, they don't, they don't even leave a comment and say thanks. And you know how I know that is I can see my file logs. I know what people download from my server. I don't know who's doing it, but I know what, get, I know what happens. And it, it kind of, it's kind of aggravating to do all that work and, and have people, you know, not even spend the time to watch the video or leave a comment. So now it's in the video. You guys just saw it. If you're here, you got the link, you know where it is. Mark the time. You can mark the time. How, I don't know how many minutes in we are, but um, uh, 19 minutes in. Yeah, mark the time. And uh, oh, let's, let's turn this on. And uh, now you know where to get those files if you need them. Okay, so here's the scale. Zero grams, we're zeroed out. And the empty weight of the quad, I'm going to make sure the whole thing stays on the scale. 561 empty, 563 empty, and then... I'll be using these Liperior 6L 1550s, at least initially. I do intend for this to be a long range or long endurance quad, so I don't think I'll be sticking with these for sure. I will probably be switching to some form of Lion battery. I haven't, you know, I have to go do testing. My objective with this is to keep it in the air 15 to 20 minutes. That's the goal. So for initial testing, I'll be flying with these batteries. I'll be, you know, tuning as I go. Well, let's leave it at that. And um, here's the battery strap. I don't want to not have that, but this is fly weight um, right there. We're looking at 850 grams, and that includes 30 grams for the SMO 4K. Keep in mind, we've got the DJI and the SMO camera on there. So I'd say if you didn't have the SMO camera, you could take off another, I don't know, 35 grams if you count the, uh, the, heart, the camera mount. So um, 825, right? Okay, let me check the comments here um, and see what's going on. Props, Jim Fan, Jim Fan, one second, marking this. Yeah, Robert, marking this. I'm telling you, Robert, I listen, buddy. I listen. I hear you guys. You know, you're not, I know you guys are smart. I know that. You got experience. You got some skills. I know that. So I listen. I take that stuff into account. All right. Uh, Leo says, nice build. How much does it weigh? Oh, okay. Hey, we just covered that. There we go. Sean Hawken, Hawkins, my 3D printer comes tomorrow. Oh, dude. 3D printing. I don't even know. I mean, I'm sure I could have done this without 3D printing. In fact, I will show you in case you don't have a 3D printer. The quad frame is designed right there. You see, you see, let me just get my big meat hooks out of the way and I'll point to it with a device. Um, right here you can see that there, the antennas are intended to come out through that spot. And if I'm not mistaken, I think there were some foam or rubber pieces in the kit that go around this opening to uh, not, to avoid chafing. But yeah, the, the antennas were intended to come out right there. So no, you know, they did prepare for that. The only thing that you would have been on your own for is GPS. They didn't make any provision in here for GPS, but the antennas were accounted for. Uh, they gave double-sided foam tape for the air unit, so that would have been acceptable. Um, and then as far as the front goes, it's a DJI air unit, so they probably said, why would you stick another camera on there? And that's true. The only reason I'm doing this is because I want to use this to compare cameras. Honestly, when I'm all done with all that, this will probably all come off, right? I'll, I'll probably just fly the air unit and use that for recording only, so... But I'll tell you what, man. Oh, that was that. I don't know what to do about the zip tie, I guess. You know, you could zip tie that. Um, it doesn't look as cool, though. <laughs> Let's be honest. It doesn't look as cool. Um, and I actually designed this with a little bit of thought. Uh, it's round on the outside for a nice, clean look and aerodynamic. And then up front, you pull the wires out and then the pressure for the lead comes back. So I beefed up the back section a little bit. I was actually trying to think my way through it and try and make it functional. So it's, it's, it's effective. It works. It seems to be working. Um, I did spin the props up and, you know, it's doing a good job keeping everything out of the prop arc. So no issues there. Uh, but yeah, you'll have fun with that 3d printer. And if you haven't been there yet, Sean, uh, our discord server, we got some guys who know some stuff about 3d printing. So don't, you know, don't be afraid to pop into discord and, uh, ask, ask about if you need some help. Um, there are baby blue zip ties at Michael's baby blue zip ties at Michael's. Yeah. So if, yeah, if you, yeah, if you need that. Oh, and by the way, I did in the description, I put some extra stuff in the description for you guys. Um, on the, uh, 
in the description, I added a link to these. I'm still getting used to these. These are ceramic tweezers. I got these because I got really freaking tired of burning my fingertips, soldering small stuff. So I did use them during the build and I'm not gonna lie, I switched back my fingers a couple times, but you know, I still have to get used to them. So there's a link to these, they were like $7. They are handy for small parts, man. I'm not, it was very useful to have these. So they're, they're available. Um, I did put a link in Amazon. I normally don't do this kind of stuff, but I put a link for my filament. So if you like the blue that I used, I put the link for the filament in there. I know it's off a little bit from the props, but that's as close as I could I could come. You know, <laughs> filament's a little spendy to buy multiple different rolls to, to figure out, you know, which one works the best. But maybe a teal TPU would have been better, maybe. But it's okay. It's okay. I'm, I'm all right with it. And then, like I said, the gem fan props, I'll be flying those too, and they are clear. So uh, with that, the color uh, variation won't be a problem. So yeah, the ceramic, the ceramic tweezers, and these are in the description if you want to get yourself a set of those. They were handy. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not, they were useful. It was useful. You can get in real small spaces and you got to hold the wires on or, you know, sometimes you set the wire on and you solder, but the wire's sitting proud. It's like sitting up in the puddle. Um, it's handy once you have that first connection made to use these and push down and then heat it up again and it pushes that, uh, the wire right down to the pad. So that, that was handy, you know, very handy. And like I said, I'm still getting used to using those. So let's see. Um, I think there are a couple of other links that I put in in the description for things that I got on. Oh, the motor wire guards. Uh, I don't know if you caught that or if I talked about it, but I did the motor wire guards right here, um, these plastic ones. So I put a link for those in the description as well. So if you want to get those, you can do that. But let, let's talk a little bit real quick about the quad and then I'm going to check, keep, keep an eye on comments. Uh, have you, have you test, have you tested flight time with that battery? Leo, I have flown these batteries just a couple of times, mainly with the, uh, Mr. Croc. Uh, I flew it a couple of times, by the way, that return process is hundred percent complete. Get FPV. I'm going to throw those guys, uh, a little props, uh, get FPV. I think most people know get FPV is a good store, but listen, here's the deal with the Mr. Croc. I told them what my problem was. I said, look, I've, tr I've tried what I know how to do. I don't want a project right now. Can you help me out? And they said, yeah, we'll, we'll RMA that. They sent me an RMA and I sent the part back and within a day they refunded my money. No, so no complaints. And, and to me, that's good. You know, they, they didn't want to bust my chops. They said, well, as long as it's not broken and you didn't trash it, we'll, we'll respect an RMA and they did. So I got to give them props for that. I already got my money back, but yeah. I flew the I flew these six S on the Mr. Croc and uh, I'll be flying them. Obviously, I I did fly them on the Sector Five. By the way, I took that one out because I wanted to talk a little bit about the Sector Five too. But I have flown it on this one as well. Um, I haven't done any measurement effort. So if you're asking questions about the six S versus say four S, I don't have an answer for that just yet. I'm working on it and I will continue to work on that, but I don't have an answer on that just yet. Um, so let's see. Oh, I was trying to zoom just a little bit and I went too far, overshot. Okay, um, let's see. There are baby blue zip ties. To, okay, it's all it's all I use now. Uh, baby blue zip ties are all you use now? So, oh, ceramic tweezers, gotcha, 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 gotcha. Uh, NM Desert Racer, nice quad, 21 watching, 10 likes. Yeah, if you guys could hit the like button, that'd be really helpful. Um, definitely. I would, would that always helps the videos if you guys interact with the, with the videos and hit the like button. So I wanted to bring up the sector five and kind of run these two right in front of right in front of you and give you us like a, like a front to back look at these two. And I'm going to hide the chat for a minute because otherwise the screen right now is just a little too polluted. So I'm going to just tuck that away and move this. So, um, up until now, I think I've told you guys that my favorite quad up till now has been the sector five because the sector five and I'll tell you the Nazgul and the Diatone right behind it. Um, but this thing is just really good. It flies well. It's got good, good, reasonable flight time for what you're doing. The DJI integration is perfect. The return to home works fine. I mean, this is a really, it's a good quad. And I, I kind of think that this one may take over because it's bigger. It's got a little heavier lifting capabilities with the bigger motors, the F90s. And, um, you know, I'll be able to put a bigger battery and just fly a little longer. But I would definitely con consider these to be very equitable 
in terms of uh, what they what they're capable of doing. Uh, but I can tell you right now, I really do expect to be flying this one quite a bit more. <laughs> to be honest, I expect to be flying this one quite a bit more. Um, I mentioned the GPS. I use the BN880. I did not connect the compass. Uh, I don't. You don't need a compass beta flight in beta flight. I don't even know if beta flight uses the compass. To be honest with you, but I did not connect the compass. I know the GPS uh, rescue works just fine uh, using just the GPS. So I'll I'll be sticking with that. But um, anyway, I just wanted to give you a little side by side and tell you that I think you know by and large the sector sector is a really good platform. I think this will also be a very good platform. I think it'll be equitable and with maybe a little bit more carrying capability. So Leo, these are the uh, F90. These are the F90 1500 kV motors. Uh, I, th I believe the uh, link for these is in the description, but I did a bench test on these and I ran the uh, Azure three-bladed props against the Gemfan two-bladed props. And uh, these things pull like a freight train, right? What was it, 2,000, 2000 grams of thrust, 2,100 grams of thrust? Give me a second, I'll pull it up and look. I've got it handy, give me just a moment. In fact, I will, uh, I'll pop it up on the screen and let you guys see it. That would be good. So let's see. Um, here we go. Results. Let me give me just a second and I will pop this up on the screen for you. Um, I'm still here, guys. I'm just working on finding this thing and getting it on the screen so you guys can see it. There we go. I got to resize it now, of course. There we go. There are the test results. So when I ran the Azure three-bladed uh, props, and these were the Azure 6145 by 3, and I compared those to the Gemfan 6042 by 2s. And um, these blue props, the three-bladed, they produced 2,128 grams of thrust at peak. Uh, so that's pretty solid. But the Gemfans two blades, they were still putting out 1,840 grams of thrust. So they're no slouches. You know, the two bladed props, they'll they'll fly this thing just fine. But uh, the main takeaway for me was the, while the efficiency on the two blade was a little low, which was unexpected, the uh, amp draw was also four amps per motor lower. So you're looking at 16 grams of amp draw, less amp draw at peak on this quad when you're running the two bladed props. So... Anyway, I will set the Sector 5 aside, and I'll see if there's any other questions. If not, we're probably coming to the bottom. Um, let's see. RC, hello all. John, I just checked out the link for the tweezers. They are out of stock, so we need to look for another item on Amazon. Are they really out of stock? I can't... Really? I Come on. you got to be kidding me. I'm going to look. I'm going to look. That's unbelievable. I've never... I mean, I've done that to RC shops before, but I don't think I've done it to Amazon shops in the past um no they're not out of stock it says out of stock right here on my on my screen it says out of stock so i'm not sure buddy let me i'll paste the link in again just to just so you guys have it but where i'm looking right now it says they're in stock so let's see um let me oops sorry a lot of buttons back here um i they look like they're in stock to me the link uh, now i'm in the u.s maybe that's the problem I'm in the U.S. This link is for the U.S. So uh, Robert says, I think you like the Armitan better, less wind rejection for the weight and zero props in view. Yeah, 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 yeah. The props, that's that's the other one. Um, I don't think the Sector 5 has props in view. Um, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. It does not have props in view. Um, but yeah, weight. Weight carrying capacity, a little heavier. And those those F90 motors, man, they're solid. <laughs> the F90 motors, I can't, I'm not, those things, they're pulling hard. 2,100 grams of thrust. I mean, that's that's 8,400 grams of thrust. The thing only weighs 800 grams. So one motor could carry one-to-one -one power, power to weight. So, yeah. All right. Um, I don't see any other questions or any other comments. So that's probably a pretty good stopping point for us. I would ask you guys again, you know, if you wouldn't mind, hit the like button. That really helps video placement. It lets YouTube know that you guys care and uh, you like the video. So if you could do that, that'd be great. The other thing I'll do is uh, I'd like to thank our patrons on RC Video Reviews. You know, the patrons help me fund projects like this. They help me, you know, they take some of the financial burden off. So by doing it, I can put these kinds of things together and show you how things work. And if you're willing to help the channel make content like this, patreon.com is a good place to do it. You can go to patreon.com slash RC Video Reviews. And for three bucks a month, I've got a cup of coffee tier. You can kick in and help me. And, um, you know, I do things like this because I have, I have that kind of help. 
So I just want to make sure I give a big shout out to my patrons and say thank you. And um, that's it. I think that's it. I don't see any other questions, so I think we can wrap this up. Thanks for watching the video. Um, thanks for popping in on a Sunday night. I hope you guys all have a, a peaceful Memorial Day weekend for those that celebrate Memorial Day in the U.S. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy.